way that they're going to improve those positions truly is going to be next off season, whether it's free agents or it's through the draft. It's just until then we're going to be up and just having to deal with what we have. It just, it is the reality yeah. of it. Unfortunately, you know, if, if, if a player's worth was, was, was actually worth a damn, he'd be signed mm-hmm. right now on some team. True. In, in, yeah. Wait a second. Wait a second. No, Ryan, that's off base because last year <laughs> at the trade deadline, uh, <laughs> The, the the New York football giants traded a former all-pro defensive tackle for a fifth-round pick to the Detroit Lions named Snacks Harrison, and dude's a freaking monster still. Like, so yeah, prominent players get traded. That's my point here is I don't want to hear there's no excuses. Like, you just got to be willing to make the calls and you got to be able, like they probably could have got snacks Harrison two weeks earlier or three <clears throat> weeks earlier. If they would have offered a third or fourth <clears throat> pick and guess what? Snacks Harrison would have been worth that. Cause Hello? he can still play. Like that's my point. Hello? Move, <laughs> make moves. <sighs> Great discussion, guys. Yeah, no, I mean, hey, if there's a guy like out there that can that can be like the next Snacks Harrison in a trade for the Packers, I'm all for it. I just, you yep. know, it's hard it's hard to predict who those guys are because the guys that we're talking about are on rosters currently. Then, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. What's the going rate for a guy you know that is going to actually be worth trading for? Is going to come in and sure. contribute? I just it, it's. It, it, we're not, you know, the guys that are on the streets is what I was talking about. It said that those are the guys that I'm just like, they're all just names to me at this point. I, you yeah. Know, but yeah, if there's if there's a guy that is actually available, make make the phone call and we can actually trade for him and he can actually contribute to this team this year and and, and help improve an area of weakness. Of course, we got to look. We got to look at all of those possibilities. I just realistically, you know, I just it's not gonna. I don't, I don't see it happening. That's the problem. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. I mean, again, if we're if we were the Patriots and Bill Belichick, I mean, he could take a, a cashier at Walmart and turn him into an All Pro. That's how great of a coach he is. But again, we have Matt Lafleur, who is not a slouch of a coach himself. But again, he's a rookie, first year. He just suffered his first loss. So, I mean, he's got some he's got some work to do. Um, I I love the guy. I mean, I love his personality and I love the way he's been running this team. But I mean, I, I mean, hopefully he'll learn from this loss and he'll teach his players to um, move on and get ready for Dallas. So we'll see. <clears throat> I'm not going to fret over it yet, though. I mean, it's week four, it's the beginning of the season. So, I mean, if it was like week 16 and it was like a playoff spot was on the line, then, yeah, I'd be really worried. But, I mean, it's early. So that's why you can't fret over it yet. And I'm going to get shit talks from all my coworkers tomorrow. <laughs> And I earned it, I guess, but... Uh. ...up on defense to start shoring up the run defense. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the biggest one. Hey! Where did you go, Dave? I don't know. I was sitting here, and next thing I know, my phone went bloop, and then... I don't know. <laughs> or did you just take a drink break without us telling, without us knowing? No, because I haven't got any rants that I didn't ever drink. <laughs> this is this this podcast right now is a mixture between first take and undisputed. <laughs> that's how that's how great of a podcast it is right now. Jay is get Bayless. <laughs> I don't know who'd be Shannon Sharp, and I don't know who would be uh, Stephen A. And there isn't a Molly, so I don't know. See, I, I can say know. Ryan or Shannon Sharp because of the fact that I, find I can myself, see him busting I out find, a do-rag and, and, and bourbon <laughs> right on the set. I find yep, and myself, a cigar. Yep. Excuse me, I find myself <laughs> more of an intellectual Will Kane type. Thanks. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah, that guy, that guy actually uh, got me on a tweet a long time ago. I tweeted at him about Tom Brady, and I said, what makes Tom Brady so much better than Aaron Rodgers besides rings? And he goes, oh, I love the fact that you said besides rings. And that was his response, and I'm like, oh, okay. So. Just quarter, quarterback wins is a stat, apparently. Oh, apparently to Will Kane, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know like, what uh, to any of those people because I've never I've yeah. watched those fucking shows. I can't. Yeah, yeah no. Those guys, I, so. Yeah. Skip Bayless lives and dies None by the above, GDR. Great. It's a great, well, you're uh, the one that just called us there. all scumbags. Thanks a lot, Parker. <laughs> hey, we're all better than Skip Bayless and uh, Will Kane. So, and that's not really saying much because I mean they're not really all that good themselves. So, me <laughs> and my blue raspberry vodka and beer are highly offended. <laughs> me and my diet Mountain Dew are highly offended that you're highly offended. I feel like Jay needs to have a tampon with that, and I feel like you need to go to bed past your turkey after saying that. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, just another episode of First and Goal. <clears throat> so you got to say, so if, if A.J. Green wasn't on, seriously, I'm asking this, if you guys knew A.J. Green was going to be on track to play in the next two to four weeks, you wouldn't trade for him? I would. For sure. Depending on how injured he is, if he's fully healed, then hell yeah, I'd get, I'd get him. I mean, we need help I'm in the spot, he, bad. I'm saying if he's got the clearance to come in and play in two to four weeks, hey, would you do it? Jay. I'm sorry, I was distracted. Um, yes, I would. <laughs> well, we got two yeses. Done? Do you have to duck underneath your little pink umbrella to drink your little fancy drink? <laughs> I'm drinking this shit straight out of the bottle like a man! There's <laughs> nothing to say like oh, drinking well, blue raspberry pasta. What would be the compensation you'd give up for a trade like that? For AJ Green, I'd give up a, a, a second all day long. Yeah, same. Yep. Uh, I, think, uh, I think he's I worth will, that. I will put it like Especially this. Especially if healthy. At his age, with his injury history and where the team is at, if you look at what uh, relatively those type of receivers go for, because you're not going to get, you're not paying for past production. You're playing, paying for what the player mm-hmm. is now and what he will be. That type of player, I know. you get a third round pick for. Him. You just said be a great player. That is what I'm saying the value would go for. He's not AB. Like, AB was healthy. He was just crazy. Like, and what did they give? What AB didn't get, they didn't get, like... Speaking of a rabbit hole, do you guys ever watch the show Ballers? Wait, Dude. what is that with The Rock? The, yeah, yes. do you guys watch the show Ballers? I have. Okay. I've heard uh, of it and I've seen commercials. AB, I've, AB is Ricky yeah. Garrett. To the T. Is who? A B is Ricky Jarrett. Mm. Yeah, he, his character is A B. If you think about the crap that's happened on that show with what Ricky Jarrett has done, the little slot receiver on there, it, it's to the T. Like A B would be the guy to walk out in traffic and get he'd be slaughtered by a car. Yeah, I don't even want to talk about A B. No, okay. no. <laughs> I mean, we're already, we're already all, we're already all clinically discussed after this three day loss. I blocked him on Twitter today. Okay, he, he cares of, he, he cares about that block. He's hurting inside. <laughs> You're an asshole, you big furry man. <laughs> <laughs> man, you can tell that we lost tonight because we're just running out of stuff to even talk we about. Are, uh, we're honestly going on such random tangents. <laughs> yeah. I have one more thing. I have one All more right. thing. Ibrahim Campbell. Do you think he comes back and makes a difference? Because he's on the pop, yeah, not on high art. Uh, yes, yes, I think so. From what I've seen, at least, yeah. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I think he would make a difference. Yeah, yeah I brought his name up earlier tonight, actually, but it kind of got uh, cut off there. But yeah, I think he, I think he can bring something. Um, it's been a while since he's played, though, you know. So mm-hmm. who knows what he's going to look yeah. like, but. Um, that that Raven Green loss right now is really starting to um, yeah come back to haunt us a little bit because he, yeah. he was that guy that was playing that role so well and um, uh, the last two games you know you've seen a big difference without having that guy in that role mm-hmm. big time yes I would agree with that. <clears throat> 
Same Vince sentence. isn't there. <laughs> not even close. You know, and, he's he's yeah. he's not ready. You know, no. And I'll say this, Ryan. I know that you're saying you can tell we lost and everybody's picking on us, but you know what? When you lose, there's not a lot of uh, uh, greatness to be talked about when the fan side comes out of you. Like the the breakdown, yep. we'll have to have you come back later on the Tuesday and talk football. This time, when you lose. It's therapy therapeutic session. time. And drinking. Yeah, I hear you. Mm-hmm. I hear you. of drinking. Therapy. You got to talk it <laughs> I'm out. I'm going to give one shout out to Mercedes Lewis for yes. hurdling and defending that hurdle. Yes. That was awesome. That was probably one of the more, one of the highlights of the night for me. It was I mean, early in the game, so Jimmy hadn't, Jimmy Graham hadn't caught a pass yet. Mer- Marseille yeah. had caught a couple. So I, I, th- these are early in my notes as I'm looking through them. But at that time, I said, Mercedes greater than Graham with the, the, the greater than sign. <laughs> when, he gets his, when he gets his chances, his opportunities, he makes them. Exactly. He, he, he's, he's done well when he gets the opportunities. He just doesn't get a lot yep. of them. Mm-hmm. You know? Sure. Because I was no, shocked they didn't try to go for him in the end zone. I think, I think the biggest mi- misconception with us getting Lewis when we first did get him, I think that was like 2018 in the offseason, if, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the biggest reason why we got him was to block because we really didn't have any good pass protection up yeah, front. Yeah, he was and, the number one blocking tight end in the league. That yeah, 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 yeah. And even now, though, I mean, he's becoming more of a multidimensional tight end. I mean, he can catch passes well, and he, he can also has block, that. too. That's the yeah, Jacksonville. He's yeah, no, that's that's yeah. what I think. That's what I think people forget, though, is what I'm trying to yeah. say. Like Packer fans are like, oh, well, Jim, uh, Jamal or uh, uh, Lewis, why 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 is he out there catching passes? Shouldn't it be Graham? I'm like, uh, you can catch passes just as good as Graham can. He well, had well, the with Blake Bortles. He was mm-hmm. the one who was blocked. Who was who was the yeah, yeah, the strip sack. Yeah, yeah. Strip sack. Yeah. So yeah. But that's the problem is, you know, when we start to put these tight ends one-on-one with these guys, that's when sure. bad stuff happens. Yeah. You know, it, it, mm-hmm. it's, it's, that's when it's happened for the first Especially four games. Especially top-tier pass rushers. Yeah, yeah, not even like mid-tier. These are top-tier pass rushers we're putting tight ends on. I don't care how a good blocker of a tight end you are in run blocking. Pass blocking is a whole different animal. Mm-hmm. Now, to, go to, uh, to uh, continue with your point on pass rushers, I mean, this is, if you think about it, the Green Bay has had, what, I think three, this is like a third week now with an, an elite pass rushing, pass rushing tandem that we had to face. I mean, we faced the Broncos, we faced the Eagles, we faced the Vikings, Bears. We faced the Bears, all of them, all of which have great front seven. And we've come out of it three and one. Uh, that's pretty good. Just saying. Yeah, we lost at home, but I mean, coming out of there three and one is relatively do you think LaFleur, guys, do you think he comes out and looks at that 2017 McCarthy tape, the way they use Aaron Jones, to maybe try and break down the Cowboys' defense? Possibly. I mean, he did. He was very effective against them in uh, 2017 when we faced off. So um, I could see that happening. I don't think we need to watch that tape to, to figure out out what they need to do. This is a Brit this is a different Cowboys defense from two years mm-hmm. ago. It is. You know. Yeah. They they, yeah. they they've got they've got way different players now. So it, it, I don't think that's gonna be the case. But I do think that they started doing stuff in the second half with Aaron Jones that I've been wanting to do, which I always want them to do, which is starting to throw to him out of the backfield. Screen screen ended, game. Yeah. He ended up having six catches in the game. Mm-hmm. You know, like and it was working. It was effective. Yeah. Get him in space. That's where yeah. he's the best. Mm-hmm. Get the ball in his hand in space. And, yeah, that's um, what's... Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, I mean, they, they, that, that's what they need to be doing and putting into the game plan. You know, yeah. especially if there's going to be a major pass rush. That's what mm-hmm. slows down the pass rush, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, go ahead. To continue with your point on Jones, um, the biggest frustration that I had last year with him was obviously, I mean, he was hurt a lot. But then once they finally got him going, they reverted back to just running him straight at the middle instead of using screens, which he's way more effective on screens than I I think than running up the middle. And I think now with the floor, I think hopefully you're going to start seeing more screens because he was very effective tonight, even though we um, ended up losing the game. 
I mean, that's that's where he, I mean, in, in open space, he's great. So he can elude defenders. He's very shifty, very slippery. As 